every morning, we wake up. And every morning, we know who we are. We know the person who just woke up, so we know ourselves. Although, let's say, in the last eight hours, our soul was not consciously active, and in our deep sleep phases, when we are not dreaming, our self-model or our model of oneself is indeed shut down. Every time when we wake up, the construct of our self or of our body as a whole firstly needs to be rebooted. This happens in the first moments after waking up when you just need a little while to reconnect with yourself. The question now is, what is this model of oneself? Or to rephrase it, to whom do we listen to when we lead in a dialogue? I'm curious about these questions since I'm a child. Back in primary school, I used to play in the living room of our flat, not knowing I had a so-called out-of-body experience. I had the feeling of leaving my body and looking at myself from a bird's eye perspective. The voice in my head vanished and so did the feeling of the border of an inside and an outside. I felt infinitely big. There was no you and me anymore. There was no subject and object anymore because there was only everything, only the world as a whole. Unfortunately, I never got this feeling again, although I meditate quite often. But the question of who I am and where this idea of myself, this idea Kyra came from, remained. Retroperspectively, this experience has changed my point of view onto the question about who I am as a human being as I grow older. To come back to the present, I am looking right now at you as my audience, and you are looking right now at me, at least I hope so. The point I want to make is that all of us can only see a little fraction of this room, but never the whole room at once. So to go further, the research of neuroscientists has shown that our consciousness model of reality is only a low dimensional projection of the physical reality, which is actually richer in content. Among other reasons, this is due to the limited capacity of our sensory organs. A classical example would be our eyes. We can only see electromagnetic waves which are between 400 and 800 nanometers long. So again, we can only see a little fraction of a whole spectrum which is a lot, a lot longer than 400 to 800 nanometers. The selected information which is presented to our self-model forms the content of our consciousness experiences. And within these experiences, we create a stable first-person perspective. We generate the illusion that we are inside of us in the inner center. It is like in the house in which we are living. There is not only light switched on as we have consciousness experiences. No, someone is actually at home from a first-person perspective. And this is something that distinguishes us from other existing evolved biological phenomena, which might also have consciousness experiences. But we, as we are humans, are aware of the content of our consciousness self, which are, for example, my current emotions, thoughts, or sensations. The self is a dynamical process which changes over time. It is a representational picture it is a representation of content of the picture we actively create or generate of us as a whole. It is like a simple experiment conducted in 1989, which was performed by two psychiatrists named Bodvinik and Cohen, showed that healthy persons could actually experience a synthetic extremity as their own. So, the self processes information as a system, and you might wonder, where is the boundary of this information processing? And this experiment shows that our bodies is not the boundary of our self-model. They asked different test persons to look at a fake hand while their own hand is covered. 
Now, both hands are stimulated at the same time, and approximately after 70 seconds, the test persons could actually feel the rhythmic stimuli in the fake hand. And in fact, in that very moment, the self or the hand becomes a part of the bodily self. The experiment shows that our self model is flexible. We construct ourselves just as it suits us. So we should stop taking the self for granted because it is rather a fragile construct of our brain. The big point here is that we cannot acknowledge this model as such. We are not able to draw our attention to this process of construction. We are not able to understand this process of construction. And exactly this gives us the illusion of a unity of ourselves. It is like in the experiment where the test persons could not grasp the process, yet only the result. Therefore, our self-model is called transparent. And a representation is called transparent if the system that uses it is not able to identify this representation as such. It is like a crystal clear window. We see through it at all times, but we are not able to see it. So, to go further, if we are aware of this process of construction in our brains, we will get lost in ourselves. Putting it like the famous poet William Blake, if the doors of perception were completely cleansed, everything would appear to man and women as it is, infinite. So what has been said so far? The fundamental feeling of a self-model is formed through an auto-epistemic unity in a system that can represent itself, which is realized through a blocked access of information. So the open question still is, who is the observer that can reflect him or herself? Who is listening to whom when we lead in a dialogue? The question of subjectivity and subjective experience is the most deepest and fascinating mystery in consciousness research. We know for a fact that we are representational systems. That means that we have higher order self models. To simplify it, we can reflect ourselves. In my opinion, we have to grasp other theoretical and abstract concepts in order to deeply understand this ability and phenomena of self-representation. Imagine you're looking into a mirror. You as the person or as the subject, as you have or as you can experience, look at the reflection in the mirror, which is your object of cognition. So as you're looking into the mirror, of course you would say, yeah, the person that I'm seeing right now is myself. This mirror imaginary is a metaphor for self-awareness. And here's one problem. As you can recognize yourself in the mirror, subject and object coincide. We are able to recognize ourselves as subjects that are recognizing and as objects that are recognized. This is a circular process of cognition, and such circular process of cognition are called self-reference. All processes of self-reference come with one problem, the subject-object divide. Every attempt of the subject to be the object will fail, because the object is now the former. You as the subject, or in the mirror imaginary, you are as a person, could try to prove yourself, but therefore you are ought to step out of yourself in order to reach an objective point of view. But obviously, that is not possible. So, the scholar Bitbo and Petit Mangan described the subject-object divide as a secondary byproduct rather than being primary given. The self or our self-models are formed in our brains and is therefore a model or a construct of our brains. And subjectivity is, surprise, also formed in our brains. So the idea of a subject and an object is only an auxiliary construction. 
As I told you in the beginning, during my out-of-body experience, I had the feeling of the world as a whole. There was no subject and object anymore. And for me personally, this holistic idea of the world gives me strength. Because as I am a part of the whole, I can't get lost in it. And we all are a part of nature and not apart from nature. Therefore, nature does not know an inside or an outside. Nature does not know a subject and an object. So if we let go the idea of a subject-object divide, we would access new ways onto the question about who is the observer that can reflect him or herself? Because there is no such thing as an observer anymore. The self would not be any longer in the center of our existence as well as the earth is not the center of all the solar system. As we have the ability to recognize ourselves, we have to take the recursive organization of cognition into account. Therefore, we have to explain how can cognition arise from itself? So the question of who is the observer that can reflect him or herself is not the right question to ask anymore. In my opinion and in the opinion of other philosophers, we have to ask another question instead. How did the observer evolve? How evolved something such complex and fascinating through, plotic, through particles like electrons and quarks. Through evolution, the process of living has evolved. And through evolution, the process of cognition has evolved. And autopoetic entities have been adapting to their changing environment. Autopoiesis is the abilities of forms and systems to generate themselves as a recursive organization. Therefore, autopoiesis is the main criteria for living systems like us. The aim of autopoietic entities is to maintain their autopoietic entity. To simplify it, we all have the basic drive to stay alive. Therefore, our representation of ourselves is a product of dynamical self-organization through evolution. Both self-reference systems and self-organization play a central role when talking about how did the observer evolve. Consciousness at all levels has evolved by biological mechanisms. Therefore, our self-model is not independent of our body structure as we are embodied organisms. So, consciousness is not independent of our biological hardware. Therefore, I don't believe that we are able to create non-biological robots or artificial intelligence which can be conscious about their selves. Our relation to our environment is determined through the internal organization of information processing. And as we saw earlier, the self model is exactly that way of information processing. To put it all into a nutshell, there are two points I want to make. Firstly, despite of what we have all heard, these are only theories and is not the unchallenged truth. So all I ask of you today is to keep an open mind for ideas that might not seem accessible. But trust me, that way we can go beneath the surface and try to find answers to questions we can't even imagine to process right now. For example, one big issue is when, how, and through which mechanisms did we get conscious about ourselves? Such problems can only be solved through a whole new way of logical thinking in various disciplines. This is an interdisciplinary project where no historical prototype does exist. To quote a physicist, as I study physics by myself, Einstein, problems cannot be solved by the same level of awareness that created them in the first place. And secondly, Annie Seth also stated in a previous TED talk, our self models only exist through and because of our living bodies.
and our basic drive to stay alive. So, isn't it the most beautiful thing to wake up every morning and to be? Thank you very much.